Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Hannah. So today I'm going to be starting a reading vlog for this brick of a book called Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Apparently he wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which I haven't personally read and I haven't watched the movie either, so I don't really know too much about that, but I assume this is a different genre because this is like horror. So maybe I should look up the other book and see. So I just realized that this is a YA book, at least according to my library. And I was thinking it was adult, especially with like how tiny the font is. It's very, very small. Hmm, I guess I'll figure it out as I go. So the description for this book is quite small and I'll read it for you guys. It says, single mother Kate Reese is on the run. Determined to improve life for herself and her son Christopher, she flees an abusive relationship in the middle of the night with her child. Together they find themselves drawn to the tight-knit community of Mill Grove, Pennsylvania. It's as far off the beaten track as they can get. Just one highway in, one highway out. At first it seems like the perfect place to finally settle down. Then Christopher vanishes. For six long days, no one can find him, until Christopher emerges from the woods at the edge of town, unharmed but not unchanged. He returns with a voice in his head only he can hear, with a mission only he can complete. Build a treehouse in the woods by Christmas, or his mother and everyone in the town will never be the same again. So I like how short that description is. I really hate when the description on books goes like down this whole entire side and like down this whole entire side in the back. Like, I don't want to know everything that happens before I read it. I want to be surprised. I have no idea how long this is going to take me to read either. Oh my god. It's been a while since I've read something this large. This book is also newer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it says it was published in 2019, so that's not bad. And I'm going to double check the genre. According to Google, it's a psychological horror novel, so that is right up my alley. I also see thriller as a genre listed, but I don't see anything about it being YA, so I wonder if my library just made a mistake? Yeah, even on Goodreads it says adult, so huh, I might have to ask my library about that. Anyway, let's get into it. Good morning everyone, it is now Thursday, I just got out of the shower, so excuse this wet mop of hair going on here. So I didn't get too far in the book, but it's surprising me so far. Since it's like 700 pages, I really thought the beginning is just going to be really slow until we get into anything spooky or what the fuck or anything like that. But it gets right into it and it's awesome and I have no idea what's happening, but I am so glad that it just jumps right in because even though I do like a slow burn 700 pages of a slow burn can be a bit much. So I got to part two so I guess this is a book that's divided into parts. I'm on page 51 chapter 7. The chapters are incredibly short so I would not be surprised if there's like a hundred freaking chapters in this thing but the whole first part before we even have like chapter one is 50 years in the past. It's pretty much like this little kid where he's not even sure if he's like dreaming or if this is real and he's being chased by what's essentially like a shadow type person. And then we get into the current time period and it's not really told from someone's like perspective. It's like the omniscient point of view, I believe is what you call it. And like I read in the description, it's basically a mother and son who are fleeing an abusive relationship and they end up in Pennsylvania. And the little kid is only seven years old, but he understands their situation pretty well. And when they go into the city, he notices there's like this cloud in the sky that looks like a face not a man or a woman's face, just a face in general. And I guess it stays in like the same part of the sky for like a week straight. And then all of a sudden it's gone. And he ends up going to elementary school and he, when he leaves, he sees this face in the sky again. And he says like, 
wink if you can like hear me and the cloud winks and it's just like what the fuck is going on he's talking to a fucking cloud and he essentially follows this cloud into these woods and creepy stuff starts happening he runs away and that's where we come into part two so weird stuff happening right away which i really appreciate and I definitely have never read a book where someone is talking to the clouds and the clouds are responding. So that's definitely different. Also, we have some House of Leaves vibes in this thing. Right at the end of where I stopped reading, it goes in to this. Where there's several pages where there's just one word on each and it says... Christopher was not seen from for six days. And so each one of those words is just on one page. And the second I saw that, I was like, oh my God, House of Leaves. So that kind of intrigues me about this book even more. Because now I'm curious if that's going to happen again or if there's going to be in any other form different... Eh or if there's going to be any other difference in formatting. Oh man, I took my bookmark out and closed the book. Damn it. So yeah, this has definitely intrigued me and I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, I'm so sleepy today and I had nightmares all night long. Not from the book, just, just nightmares in general. And I just want to sleep all day, but that's not gonna happen. Anyway, I got this far into the book. I think I'm just over 100 pages or something like that. But I got to part three. So like, I'm on page 109 and it's already part three and chapter 20. Like, damn. So this is definitely divided into a lot of tiny parts. But I mean, it's been super interesting so far. So I guess that works for the book. Also, check out this freaking bookmark that Book Depository sent me. It's a freaking meme. Jesus. So this is fine meme. So, basically, Christopher the kid just kind of wanders out of the forest and he doesn't know what the hell happened to him. He just says he like followed this nice man out of the forest. And that's really suspicious. But since he came back, everything is going perfect for him and his mom like he has dyslexia and he's really bad at math and stuff like that and now all of a sudden he's like a genius with it so now the question is what exactly is causing all of this to happen and i'm starting to develop some theories like i'm wondering if there's some like spirit that lives in the woods kind of like a la pet cemetery which yes i'm bringing up pet cemetery again because there's one character that makes this comment about how the woods are probably going to be chopped down all by christmas for housing development and so i'm wondering if there's some spirit in the woods that's trying to use Christopher to prevent this from happening. Like, I don't really know. Like, it's it's so bizarre because at one point Christopher's talking to a fucking plastic bag and the plastic bag is responding. So he could just be crazy for all I know. But that's where we're at right now. Pretty much everything is going really well for Christopher and it kind of ends with the plastic bag scene and now i'm in part three which part three is called best friends so i really hope he didn't just become best friends with the plastic bag so it is now saturday evening and we've been gone most of the day like we just got home about 10 minutes ago so i'm getting started on dinner here i'm just making simple pasta and garlic bread because we've been gone all day we're actually playing D&D. We have almost our whole group together again, so it's really nice. Also, yes, I live in France and don't have a bread knife. Don't judge me. So I hit part four, chapter 34. 
last night and I'm a, it's on page 189 and I honestly have no idea how this book is 700 pages long because so much has happened in the story already and it just keeps progressing like it doesn't feel slow at all and we're getting to what feels like should be the climax of the story so I'm just like where the hell are these other 500 pages coming from so this story must take like a giant turn or something cuz Because I don't really know what else would make a book that long. So I'm really interested to see where it goes from here, I guess. But I'm still kind of going with my theory that there's some kind of like forest spirit or demon type thing that's trying to prevent the forest from being destroyed. I did have some other theory, but that's been debunked by another reveal that happened. So that's fine. But man, even if this was like a shorter story, I would still be okay with it because I really enjoyed the entire thing. Like I said, it's not a slow paced novel, or at least it isn't in my opinion. Like there's been so much happening that I've completely forgotten that there is so much of the book left. Also another thing that I'm really enjoying is the adults aren't completely stupid or unaware, or at least the adults that matter aren't. And I really like that we're not having to see characters be obviously oblivious or dumb or just not realize things that are right in front of them. Like Christopher's mom is aware that something weird is happening. The sheriff is aware that something weird is happening and they're not just kind of brushing it off as just the feeling or whatever. So that's another aspect that... Oh shit, I don't have the butter anymore. Well, fuck, I just realized I made a mistake. I thought I still had the soft butter, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to try and melt this a little bit to make it softer. Anyway, um, what the fuck was I saying? Yeah, the adults in the story are more observant and aren't stupid. So that also is making it more interesting because it's not just the children that are involved. The adults are obviously going to be involved at some point too. One thing though that's a bit meh is that these children are supposed to be seven years old and the things they're doing, the things they're saying, I just doesn't seem like seven year old stuff. I think it would make a lot more sense if they were more 11 or 12. Seven just seems too young for what's happening. Can I not stick my thumb in butter? Which I did see some reviews that people had an issue with that as well and that completely makes sense to me because I definitely see that. The children are definitely acting way too old for their age. And it doesn't exactly take me out of the story, it just makes me assume they're older than what they are. So then when it's reiterated how old they are or what grade they're in or whatever, it's just kind of like, wait, what? So it isn't too big of a deal where it makes me enjoy the story less. It's just one of its flaws, I guess. And here is the final product. Pro tip, making garlic bread with baguettes is the best way to do it. It is so good and oh my god, it smells so garlicky. 
I eat way too much of this. If you hear fighting noises in the background, it's just my husband playing Monster Hunter. As he shakes his head at me for some reason. It is Sunday afternoon. It took me way too long to remember that. I didn't get to read as much as I wanted to last night. I'm actually about to start reading again. I'm on chapter 43, page 232. And... I have no idea what's happening in this book at this point. I'm just along for the ride. Like, I don't think any theory I could come up with would be correct. Although I did just think up of another one and now I'm really curious. I've gotten to the point where I can see how it's a longer book now, but still not 700 pages. So I really hope it doesn't slow down, but it seems like it's going to now. So I'm a bit worried about that because I really don't want it to have been like, over 200 pages of a pretty fast, engaging, interesting story, and then having it slow down in the middle is just a, it's just a downer. Like, I don't really want that experience in this book, but we'll see what happens from here. I'm on chapter 50, page 294 now, and oh man, this book can be really tense. Like that last chapter is just an adrenaline rush and so much is happening. Oh man, I'm really interested to know if this is really going to be like a supernatural story in the end or if it's all going to be mental illness, for example. Like, it's crossed both lines and... Uh, it's crossed both lines and it's really hard to tell which way it's gonna go in the end. I don't really know how to explain anything that's happening without spoilers. Like if you're looking for something that feels fresh and a bit of a mindfuck in the horror genre, then I would recommend this book. One thing again that I'm really noticing is this kid does not seem like seven years old. He is doing way too much for a seven-year-old to handle. Like, he pretty much stayed up all night, every night for like a month straight and there's no way that a seven-year-old would be able to do that. And I understand that there's an aspect of this where he's supposed to be smarter than what he's, uh, he's supposed to be smarter than a normal seven-year-old and that's fine, but just what he physically is capable of even in the real world, it, it makes no sense. So I do kind of wish that the kids were a little bit older just because even knowing they're seven, it doesn't feel like that at all. I'm about halfway through the story now and my god, I really like am wondering when the climax of the story is gonna happen because it keeps kind of feeling like it's coming toward an ending, but then it keeps going and etc etc and Luckily it hasn't slowed down as much as I thought it was going to yet but So we'll see if that keeps up because that is something I'm a bit nervous of but most of the characters have actually been quite likable so far like there isn't anyone that I really dislike or hate or anything like that and I found it kind of interesting how it's really pushing how everyone has their own personal problems, their own personal struggles, their own personal demons, and how no one's life is perfect. So that's been an interesting aspect to the story that, they, that they've really been pushing. And right now I'm kind of wondering if it's going to be like a town effort in the end for defeating this like evil or whatever it is, we still don't really understand what is happening, why this is happening, who is doing this, like we have an, an image of who it is, like we've, we've encountered them in the book, but there's no real explanations for anything so far and we don't know why this is happening, so I'm really interested to continue and get those answers. We have the window open and I just started laundry, so there's probably a lot of background noise going on, so I apologize for that. Oh, am I that terrible to listen to? <laughs> I'm just kidding anyway. So today is... Oh, Oritep. 
So today is actually Tuesday. I don't know if it was just because it was Monday or what, but yesterday I felt pretty blah for most of the day. And I didn't read too much and I just read in the evening, so it just kind of didn't really feel like it was worth it to update. Yesterday though, I repotted some of my plants and this morning I woke up to find out that Horty who was eating over there, decided to dig up all the plants. So I've put like lemon juice around the planters and hopefully that keeps her out of there, but we'll see. So I am actually finally around the halfway point of this book. I know it's really big, but like, I feel like this is taking me forever to read and it hasn't really like slowed down or anything in my opinion. So it's kind of frustrating that I haven't been reading this as much as I thought I would. I don't know, I guess I'm just kind of taking my time with this one. So this is going completely off the rails bonkers. Like I don't really know what's happening anymore. And before I pick this up, I did read or hear somewhere that it's religious horror and I never really saw much of that, even though there were a few characters that are like overly religious. Now that side's kind of coming out and one of the aspects of it is something I don't particularly like. And usually I really enjoy religious horror, especially in movies, but this particular thing is just, no, I'd rather do without. So. I'm hoping that what it's implying isn't the case, but I really don't get, like, I really have no idea how this book is going to end or what, like, the big reveal is going to be or anything. Because it could just be, like, so many different things and it's done a really good job of kind of keeping it a secret, I guess. So I've really appreciated that about this story. Also, another thing that's happening that I didn't expect is I thought this was really going to be like a central story around Christopher. And yeah, it is that, but literally the whole town is being affected. Like whatever is messing with Christopher is pretty much fucking up the whole town now. So there's quite a cast of characters that you end up following in this. Or are you sniffing my phone? And they're actually really easy to follow and remember. So, so that's nice. Cause I know sometimes it can be kind of overwhelming if there's such a huge cast, but it doesn't feel that way at all in here actually. But once again, I'm like, halfway through it feels like we're coming to a conclusion but there's like 300 pages left or whatever so hmm yeah this is the book that never ends at the moment I am having a really good time with it and so far like if it just ended now I would probably put it on my favorites list oh my god that's a horrible noise um now to our Disney phone you no no the adults in the story that have kind of become main characters themselves, they are, they're still doing a really good job of just not being like the obliv oblivious parent or adult that is pretty common in horror. I'm really interested to see if any of the characters can kind of solve what's going on or figure anything major out before I guess shit goes down. Today will probably end up being another day where I don't get to read much though because I've kind of been focusing on other things these past few days. Like I just started trying to do like stretches and some yoga in the morning so I spent a day kind of figuring out a routine for that. And today I'm going to a Aldi's that just opened like last week, I guess it was. It's like a 25 minute bus ride away from me. And I loved Aldi's when I lived in the US. And I, and we don't exactly have like a cheaper grocery store really close to us. 
So after filming this, I'm pretty much gonna go there and scope the place out and see how it is. But hopefully this evening I can get about another 100 pages in. I don't even know where I am right now. Like, let's see. I am on chapter 60, damn. Page 349. So wow, yeah, I'm pretty much smack dab in the middle right now. It's still in part four, was it? Three or four? Um, there hasn't been another, like, part or anything yet, so... I don't know if there will be, but how many chapters are in this book? Okay, I just kind of flipped forward and I saw chapter 129, chapter 133, so yeah, 133 chapters, oh my god, that's a lot. I'm gonna turn this camera around so you can see what is staring at me. Oh, look at that. Look at that torty. Look at this girl. She's staring me down while filming. Anyway, time to get ready to go. What is happening in this book? Oh my god. Holy shit. Ah, this is crazy i oh i am loving this what just happened so i just hit part five and where it just ended is like holy fucking shit wow so much has been happening in these past few chapters like this story is just going a million miles an hour now like it is not stopping it hasn't slowed down at all and it is just balls to the wall right now i guess wow it's getting really intense like especially that last chapter that ending there i have to like stop myself from wanting to just like read ahead to see what happens it's just oh man the one thing that's I don't like with religious stuff that happens sometimes happened so that's just kind of the one thing that I just really don't care for in the story so far but everything else has been amazing and especially Christopher's mom is just such an integral part of the story and she is on it she is smart she believes her fucking child and that's just really refreshing. I am so scared for the ending because I'm loving this so much and this has just been such a great read. I'm really scared now that the end is just gonna like drop off a fucking cliff. Oh, but everyone needs to read this. Like go pick up this book. Oh, but let's see, I'm on part five, page 381 and I'm on chapter 65. There's still so many pages left though. Like exactly how many pages are in this? Seven hundred and five. Wow, so I'm finally past the halfway point. Like this really hasn't been a predictable book at all, and it's gone in all sorts of directions and I'm glad I went into this not really knowing much about what happened because my expectations for what it was going to be have been so wrong and I'm glad they were because I really thought it was going to be so centralized on Christopher and that it was going to really slow the story down and get boring but man it hasn't slowed at all which I think is amazing for such a long story. So kudos to the author, because this is a fantastic ride. This book has gone completely ridiculous, and I don't know how I feel about it yet. I know there's one part I definitely don't like, but some things have just happened. There was a big reveal, and I'm gonna have to think on that one for a bit. I am now definitely over halfway in this book. Yay, finally. And, oh my god, I just have no idea what to feel about what's happening. 
I do have a theory, even though I said I was probably done with those. Um, there were some like little clues and everything, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this person is this person. And especially with the big reveal, it kind of seems like it's going that way. But if that's the case, then this is the most ridiculous book I've ever read. And it also brings up a million and one questions. Oh my god, cat's moving the water dish. <clears throat> But today is Wednesday morning, I believe. I do want to try to get a big chunk of this read. I would have gladly read more last night, but it was getting pretty late and I wanted to be able to sleep. I should have just kept reading really because I couldn't fall asleep till like past one in the morning. So Christopher's mom is a complete badass. She is definitely one of my favorite characters in this book. I'm really glad that there's some likable adults in this. Like I said before, this book really never stops. It has never slowed down and it just keeps getting wilder and wilder and wilder. It just keeps building on the ridiculousness. I've really enjoyed it up to this point, but now it's kind of crossed that line in being too ridiculous and just to the point where it's almost like silly now do you know what i mean so if it keeps on that trajectory oh my god this ending is going to be batshit insane i feel like this might be a hard book for me to give a rating to just because i really just don't know how i feel about parts of it it might take me a day or two after reading it to kind of figure out how I feel, I guess. I do have some things I have to get done today, like cleaning around the apartment wise. So not sure when I'll read, but I really do want to read a good amount. So it might not be until the evening, but we'll see. Oh my god, we are finally at the end of this probably stupidly long reading vlog. And I almost forgot to film today because I've been distracted by a million one things, including going to the library. And I just, I just kept forgetting to film this. So it's like, yeah, it's past 8 p.m. And I finished the book last night, yay! And note to self, don't do reading vlogs on 700 page books because it takes forever. So I pretty much just ended up reading 300 pages yesterday. And like I said, I went to the library, so I actually don't have the book anymore to like hold up or anything. So yeah, God, I can't even gather my thoughts for this book. So let's start with the rating actually. Mm -hmm. I ended up giving it a five out of five. Yay! Yeah. And the last hundred pages is where it finally decided to be slow. And I was wondering if maybe I should take off a little bit for the things I don't like about the book. But 
I enjoyed it so much that I just ended up giving it a five in the end. It's on my favorites list now. I think it's 100% worth it to read. As long as you enjoy religious horror. So going into this book, pretty much the only thing I knew about it is that I had heard from somewhere that it was a religious horror. And I actually thought I had been mistaken because of reading it and reading it and reading it. And sure, there's some religious characters, but there's no real religious horror going on until about the halfway point. Then it really gets into that aspect of it. And it pretty much just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper into that rabbit hole and becomes so absolutely ridiculous that it is laughable in some moments. And I had fun reading those out loud to my husband. So his opinion of this book is probably just fucked up. So if you do not enjoy religious horror, I would not pick up this book. Like, do not do it. I'm not religious at all, but I personally enjoy religious horror. So this was fine for me. I thought the ending was okay. And this book is so just crazy and full of so many things happening that honestly it wasn't really surprising but i kind of wish that their religious stuff had happened or became more apparent a bit earlier because like my original theory of what was going on is hmm, maybe there's like some sort of spirit like forest spirit that's going on here and that was when i was doubting that this was a religious horror but obviously my theory would have been a bit different and it did change as time went on and I was very close on one thing, so that was cool. But yeah, this book is really hard to kind of guess what's going to happen next, at least for me it was. Alright, so pros about this book. I actually enjoyed a majority of the characters. There is a pretty large cast of characters in this book, but it's all done in a way where it really humanizes them, you build a connection with them, and even if they don't exactly have the most screen time, it's easy to remember who they are. And I really enjoyed that because usually there's some characters I really detest in books and that was not the case here. The adults as well in this weren't stupid. They weren't oblivious to shit that's right in front of their face. Like they used their brains and believed their chill out child. Like I just, that was so refreshing for me because I've seen so much where a character is just made so oblivious just for the sake of the plots and that gets frustrating at times. This book did hook me right away. It gets right into the story. It doesn't really like beat around the bush of it at all. So that's another thing that I absolutely loved. And like I said, it did finally slow down in like the last 100 pages. So I think if it had been about 100 pages shorter, that would have been good. But I still loved the book anyway in the end. So it wasn't that big of a deal, especially since it was right at the end. But it was also just kind of like, all right, can we end now? I felt like the climax was going to happen like a million times by now. So let's do it and some negatives right away the ages of the kids like they're seven years old there's no way as i'm reading it i kept thinking they were like 11 to 12 maybe even a little bit older than that but then like something would happen and they would reiterate that they're seven years old and it's just like what the fuck like there's no way these kids are this young so the suspension of disbelief there was just a bit too high. So this book ended up being divided into seven parts with part four, I believe it is, being the longest. And there's 135 chapters, which it all sounds like a lot, but that means the chapters are really, really short. And for me, that really helped the book not feel or seem as large as it is. Because I kept being like, oh, I just finished a chapter. Oh, I just finished a chapter. Oh, I just finished a chapter. So that was a nice aspect of it. And in the end, it was just a good book. It captivated me. It kept my interest through the whole thing. I wanted to know what was happening. I loved trying to come up with theories. And 
The foreshadowing is really interesting to me because it's where one of my theories came from and then it kind of ends up being the opposite and it's just like, huh, I see what you did there. A lot of people compare this book to Stephen King's writing and there's a lot of similarities with King's plots in this one and also the number 217 reoccurs a lot in this book as well. So there's definitely more than one nod to King's writing in this. I also almost cried at the end, which I don't even know if that's ever happened in a book for me or when the last time that happened in a book for me. So I'd say that's another plus. And it also kind of shows like how invested in the characters I was. So if you're a fan of the horror genre and enjoy religious horror, I would 100% recommend you read this and if you're a fan of Stephen King as well even more so. I had been really hesitant to pick this up just because of the size and my impression of what the book was gonna be just didn't really intrigue me but I'm so glad I was wrong and if you pick it up I really hope you enjoy it. I am so glad this reading vlog is now done. Uh, it's it's been a bit of a long journey. It took me a week to read this book and I ended up reading like half of it in a day. So it could have taken way longer. But as always, thank you for hanging out with me. It is always greatly appreciated. And if you did enjoy this ride with me, please like and subscribe as that helps me out a lot. And until next time, bonjour and au revoir.